If you're still using the default widgets on your iPhone's lock screen, it's time to spice it up a little bit and add some useful third-party widgets that you're actually going to use. So to help you out with that, here are 11 of my favorite lock screen widgets that are completely free. The first app is Fantastical, and this application is great by itself, but the lock screen widgets make it just so much better. So I like being able to see the full month view on the calendar right here, so you can see like the full week and the full month at a glance. We have our tasks right next to that, and even up top right here, we have the ability to add a widget to add an event. So if I tap on that, it will take me straight into Fantastical, and I can add an event right there. Now, when you go to add the Fantastical widgets, you can also tap right here on the up next view, and you can change this. So you can change the calendar sets, you can show certain events and show certain tasks right there as well. So you can customize this a little bit. And then for up top right here, you do have a couple of options. So if we go down to the Fantastical section, we have the up next, and then we also have that action, which is what I decided to add up top, where I could just press on that and add an event into my calendar. The next app is Wendy, and this is a great application for tracking the weather. So obviously the default weather application only shows you the current weather conditions, but Wendy will show you a five or a four day, as you can see right there, forecast, or an hourly forecast for the day in three hour increments. So if we go to edit this right here, so we tap on our customize and go to Wendy. If we tap on one of these, you can see we have the option here to change a few things. So we can use current location or the location that we have set in the application. You have forecast models, so you can switch between different models depending on which one you think is the most accurate and it could also change the visible days as so you could do as little as three days or as many as five days you could also show a background in there if you don't want it to be translucent and then if we tap on the hourly you can see you can also change this from four to six hours right there so if you wanted to have six hours for the forecast it will change it and you can see that we have more of a you know full day forecast more of a full day look at the weather this is easily my favorite free weather widget for the lock screen all of the other good ones require a subscription but this one does not the next application is for the entire google suite but more specifically for me at least the ones i find the most useful are for simply google and for gmail so google you can see i have two little widgets right here one of them if i tap on that that will take me straight to google where i can search for something very quickly and then also right next to that is google lens so I can quickly take a picture of something and search for it via Google with Google Lens. And then also right beside that, we have Gmail. So this is the Gmail widget, which will show the amount of new messages that we have. And it also shows, you know, our main inbox, social and promotion. So it shows how many emails are in each specific mailbox and then for the top widget right here next to the date we do have the unread messages count right there so if you get a new message it will show up top right there i did also want to mention that the gmail widget seems to use much less battery than traditional notifications from the mail application and because these show as a widget not as a full-on notification so this is another great way to at least know when you get new emails but you don't have to risk losing as much battery life and by the way google does also have widgets for their other applications as well, like for Chrome, Drive, and Google Maps. But I just find Google and Gmail to be the most useful, at least for me. Next up is LockView. And this one is very straightforward. It allows you to open applications straight from the lock screen. So we have two different layouts right here. We have the circular little icons. We can add up to four. And we also have the rectangular icons right here. We can have up to two on the lock screen. So if I tap on messages, it will take me straight into the messages application. If I tap on Twitter, it will take me straight into Twitter and so on. Now to set this up, you do need to go into the lock view application and tap on create new widget, select the application and then choose the application that you want to add to that. So if I select Dropbox, for example, you can see it will use the default app icon by default, or you can change to a custom icon if you would like to. Although most of the time you probably want to keep it at the default app icon, just so you know which app that is on your lock screen. Now, something else that you're going to notice is that you can see I have five applications added right here, but if we go to customize this right here, if we go to our lock screen, tap right here, go down to the lock view, you will see that we only have four slots. So that Dropbox one that I just added is not showing up in here. And the reason for that is because you can only have four maximum, even in the application, which is kind of weird. But if we go back to the app, all we need to do is delete one of the applications that we don't want. So 
for example, if I don't want podcasts, I could just tap on delete and there we go. That is gone. And now we have four right here. So when we go back, you can see we have our Dropbox. Sometimes it will show the previous application, but it is a bug. You can see the icon there shows up as Dropbox. So we have all of those now that we can add to our lock screen. Next up is Solar Watch, And this is a great one to track the sunrise, the sunset and golden hour straight from your lock screen. And I find this to be very useful, especially for the solar wheel right here. We also have a very simple breakdown of golden hour start at 452, sunset at 527 and last light at 552. And then up here next to the date, you can see we have another widget there that shows the golden hour time. And these are what the widgets look like. So we have the next solar event. We have the solar wheel, next solar events. We have the current solar time, sunrise and sunset. Now what's cool about this is you could also change the location for this. So if you tap on one of these widgets, you could search for a different location to see the solar events in that specific location. The next app is a very specific one, but it's great if you're into F1 and this one's called Formula Fi. So this is great to see the times for the F1 races. And it's especially useful since most of the time it's in a different time zone, like the races are in completely different time zones. So it's hard to keep track of the local time that the races start, but this breaks it down and makes it very simple to to see the race times. So it shows our next F1 event is in Bahrain and that is on March 3rd through the 5th and it shows the exact times local that that starts. Now we also have the WCC standings right here. We have the WDC standings. We have our Grand Prix schedule and the full race schedule right there. We have the race start countdown, which is really cool if you're getting close to an event, a race. We have the race start countdown in a small version right there. And we also have the standings. So all of these are super cool and they're really useful if you are in to F1. Next up is Apollo. And this is a Reddit client that has a really nice selection of lock screen widgets. So you can see I have a few of them right here. So we have a featured, a trending post on my selected subreddit right here. We have a select subreddit where I can tap and simply go into that subreddit very quickly. Right next to that, we have a random subreddit. So if I tap on that, it will take me into a random subreddit. It's different every single day. And then up top right here next to the date, we have my current karma. And then we do also have quite a few different widgets to choose from. So we have the pixel pal, which is a pretty funny, pretty unique usage for the widgets right here. So if I delete these and I add in a pixel pal, it's basically just what it seems like just a little animated character there that moves around on the lock screen. It's kind of cool. You can also add that in a small version as well. So the little icon right there, you can change the pixel pal as well, the animations, the actions, all of that. You get the trending post widget, which is what I have right there. We have the distance scrolled. So if you want to see the distance that you've scrolled in Apollo, you can see that right there, the karma, which is what I actually added up top instead of as a lower widget. We have the subreddit shortcut, which is what I had at the beginning. We have the inbox. So you can see the amount of unread messages in your inbox. Most recent posts, you have that in two different sizes. Most recent comments for a specific post. And you also have random subreddit right there, which I find to be very useful, especially if you're bored and you just want to tap on that for some entertainment for 20 minutes, you can do that. And then for the top widget right there, you have the option for distance scrolled karma and inbox. Now the next one is very, very simple and that is pedometer. So this is a great one to get a quick glance at how many steps you've done in the day. And I really like having this up top next to the dates. I don't really like taking up one of my bottom widgets with this. I find it best to be up there in the top date. And all of these widgets are essentially the same but just a kind of different look so we have the step count right here and two different widget sizes we have our goal completion so if you set a goal you could have the little uh, graph right there to show you how far along you are in that goal and then you have your steps distance and floor so that's what these zeros are right here that is for distance and the amount of floors that I've climbed but like I said I think the best placement for this widget is up top next to the date and you have the option to do a step count your goal completion and your steps distance and floors you can see what those all look like right there now the next application is rise and this one is pretty interesting so it gives you a graph for your projected energy levels throughout the day based on your recent sleep schedule so the widgets here show what part of that schedule I'm on so right now based on my history and I actually find this to be very accurate by the way it's kind of scary how accurate it is but it shows right now I should be in my afternoon dip so my productivity is not at the highest but it's not at the lowest I'm currently on a dip 
for an hour and 11 minutes. And then down there, very small in the bottom right corner, it will show when my productivity should pick back up. And we have a little different version of it right there, a little icon version of that same widget right there. And by the way, I believe this is the only one in the list that actually needs a subscription for it. Next up is Smart Gym. And this is a great one for tracking your workouts. You can get a heart rate chart and so much more. So you can see here's what it looks like on the lock screen. And here are our different options for the widget. So we have our workout charts. So you can see the week's workout charts, which is great for tracking and seeing your whole week at a glance. You have your workout summary. So you can see three out of five. We have our different workouts right there. There. up next you can see your up next routine your heart rate chart which is extremely useful I find that to be much more useful than any other application that I've tried for tracking your heart rate unfortunately Apple doesn't have one by default that shows a graph of your heart rate I wish it did but we also have our active calories chart right there to see how many calories you've burnt and then our workout duration chart to see how long you've worked out over the week and then for the final application we have tesla now i know this is a very niche one but if you have a tesla it's very convenient to be able to see your charge level at a glance so i had to pull out my main phone for this one because it is of course my key for the phone and it will show my current charge level right there and you can see we also have a bigger version of the widget as well for our vehicle status if you tap on that it will show your vehicle's name and the exact percentage instead of just a little dial right there that shows an approximate percentage so there you have it those are 11 of my favorite iphone lock screen widgets here on ios 16. now i know some people are going to mention that this is going to cause battery drain and what i will say is that yes any third-party widget will cause a minor hit to battery life that is known however all of the widgets I mentioned in today's video, I've actually used on a consistent basis for several weeks or months now. And I can say that none of them have a drastic impact on battery life. The ones I found that have the biggest negative impact on battery life are like the ones that track your cellular usage, the ones that track your CPU usage, or the ones that just track your location on a consistent basis. So just keep that in mind. And sometimes it does also, you know, help you out more to just have something useful on the lock screen in exchange for maybe one or two percent less battery on a daily basis. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for more iOS 16 content. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.